This evening we are tying the light Cahill dry fly. In front of you is my father's original recipe card. You can take a look at it there. I'm trying to use all the natural materials that he used. The hook I have in the vise is a Euphring from Amazon. Now I have size 12 standard dry fly hook. And the thread that I'm using is Danville 70 denier 6 hot. Go ahead and start your thread on and wrap it back a few turns and cut away your tag end. Just want to make a little base for your wing. The wing material we are going to use is natural wood duck in its natural color. What I'm doing now is taking a quarter inch section off of the wood duck feather and making sure all the tips are aligned and as I lay it right on top I want about a hook shank or less of the wing to face forward up over top of the eye. That's going to be become our wing. What I'm doing here, I spun the thread clockwise, being I'm a left hander, it'll be counterclockwise for a right hander. So the first wrap jumps backwards and makes it a little easier to tie in. Give it a few wraps and cut your excess away. Now wrap backwards to the top of the bend of the hook and then bring a few wraps forward and bark your thread. Next we're going to take a pinch of barbarals of the light ginger hackle keeping all the tips aligned pull it straight off and lay the hackle straight on top of the hook and pull the hackle towards you as you wrap. It'll keep everything lined right on top. And I'll make a couple wraps up under the tail. And what that does, it helps to profile of that tail to look a little better, sticking straight out. The dubbing we're going to use for the body is going very old school. It's called Kapok. It is a natural fiber that is waterproof from a uh, tropical plant. It's almost like silk. It's not very easy to work with as you'll see me struggle a little bit here. But I think I get the job done. I added some dubbing wax to the thread to help the kapok stick. The material was not the easiest to work with. And also off camera I dipped my fingers into the little Dixie cup I have sitting there with water and just lightly damp fingers helped me grasp the material and spin it on. And when, remember when dubbing, less is more. So you can always add a little more as you need it. What I'm trying to do is make a nice tapered body, which this material is fighting me a little bit, but it'll work out. Do not apply your dubbing all the way up to the base of the wing. You gotta leave room to tie in your hackle feather.
typically on modern day synthetic hackle you wouldn't have to trim it up like that but this here is just a little more difficult but that's what they used back in the day and that's how I learned how to tie my first flies. This is when you want to split your wings. It's pretty easy to do. Just split equal amounts on either side of the hook and wrap figure eights in between your wing so you have equal amounts on either side and wrap in front of the wing that's very important and we secure everything if you don't it's easy for it to all come apart bring your thread back behind your wing so you can tie in your next material which is a light ginger saddle feather that I stripped the barbels off of one side and I primarily did that just for the camera. Tied a lot of these without stripping the barbels. They come out nice but you'll see that this actually comes out a little more uniform. Tied in real good. Tie uh, behind the wing and in front of the wing and go ahead you can cut away your little excess stem there and when you wrap it in you want the bare side of the feather to be touching the hook might be a little difficult to do at first but wrap touching wraps all the way up to make it nice and nice and full don't want to leave any big gaps and when you get in behind the wing pull the wing back and wrap in front and do that all the way up to right behind the eye and then you can go ahead and tie it off I selected this hackle feather to be slightly oversized. You'll notice that Catskill dry flies are typically one and a half times the hook gap, which this is pretty close, maybe a little bigger than that, but close enough for government work. Go ahead, tie it in three or four times before you cut it away and grab your whip finishing tool once you trim up a couple of little extra hairs there and give it a few whips to secure it and once you have it tied in go ahead and cut away your thread If you have a couple rogue barb rolls that didn't want to play along, go ahead and trim them up. But you can see it actually turned out pretty well. Pretty nice looking dry fly. Take some Sally Hansons. Put it on the end of your bokken and just coat the thread up a little bit. That way you don't lose your fly on your first fish. Hopefully it stays together for you for 10 plus fish. And there you have it. A light Cahill dry fly. Vintage style that my father had a recipe for 50 years ago. Alright, if you do like this, give me a thumbs up, give me a 
click and subscribe and thanks for watching stay safe out there